Today is the 29th of August, 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. And if you're joining us for the very first time, firstly, let me say welcome and thank you for listening in. And secondly, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture and music. It's easy. You'll figure it out as we go along. But let's start today's episode of Walking the Way with our opening prayer, shall we? Let's pray. O God of the still, small voice, quiet our inner spirit. Help us to focus upon you and you alone to hear your voice within. There are so many other voices demanding our attention, but we cannot attend to them without you. Be still and know that I am God, you say to us, as you said to Elijah. May your voice speak through us. In weakness, be our strength. In poverty, our wealth. In depression, our joy. In apathy, our love. We cannot sing love's song, O Lord, unless it be your voice singing in us. So take this heart, and with this mouth make your praise and thanksgiving a reality here and now. Because of, And in the name of our Messiah, Jesus. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read about the death of Elisha. And Jesus talks about the abomination of desolation. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Lord, we ask that you would prepare our hearts as we read scripture today. 
Father, open our hearts and minds to the mysteries and truths that are hidden in these pages, that we may discover a clarity of understanding within your word that has been hidden from us. Speak to us today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the English Standard Version. And we're beginning with 2 Kings 13. In the twenty-third year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned for seventeen years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He did not depart from them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Haziel, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Haziel. Then Jehoahaz sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Syria oppressed them. Therefore the Lord gave Israel a savior, so that they escaped from the hand of the Syrians, and the people of Israel lived in their hands as formerly. Nevertheless, they did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin, but walked in them. And the Asherah also remained in Samaria. For there was not left to Jehoahaz an army of more than fifty horsemen, and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen, for the king of Syria had destroyed them, and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz, and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joash his son reigned in his place. In the thirty-seventh year of Joaz, king of Judah, Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned for sixteen years. He also did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin, but he walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, and the might with which he fought against Amaziah king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat on his throne, and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now when Elijah had fallen sick with illness, for of which he was to die, Joash king of Israel went down to him and wept before him, crying, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. Then he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Draw the bow. And he drew it. And Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands, and he said, Open the window eastwards. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. And then he said, The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Syria. For you shall fight the Assyrians at Aphek until you have made an end of them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground with them. And he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it, but now you will strike down Syria only three times. So Elisha died, and they buried him. Now bands of Moabites used to invade the land in the spring of the year. And as a man was being buried, behold, a marauding band was seen, and the man was thrown into the grave of Elisha. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Now Hazael king of Syria oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion on them. And he turned towards them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them, nor has he cast them from his presence until now. When Hazael king of Syria died, Ben-Hadad his son became king in his place. Then Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again from Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael, the cities that he had taken from Jehoahaz his father in war. Three times Joash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel. In the second year of Joash, the son of Joaz, the king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did all things as Joash his father had done, but the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. 
and as soon as the royal power was firmly in his hand, he struck down his servants who had struck down the king his father. But he did not put to death the children of the murderers, according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses. When the law commanded, Fathers shall not be put to death because of their children, nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers, but each one shall die for his own sin. He struck down ten thousand Edomites in the Valley of Salt, and took Salah by storm, and called it Jokthiel, which is its name to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Jehoash, king of Israel, sent word to Amaziah, king of Judah, a thistle on Lebanon, sent to a cedar on Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son for a wife. And a wild beast of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. You have indeed struck down Edom, and your heart has lifted you up. Be content with your glory and stay at home. For why should you provoke trouble that you fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen. So Jehoash of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah faced one another in battle at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his home. And Jehoash king of Israel captured Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, son of Amaziah, at Beth Shemesh, and came to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem for four hundred cubits, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. And he seized all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the king's house, also hostages, and he returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash that he did, and his might, and how he fought with Amaziah king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoash slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam his son reigned in his place. Amaziah the son of Joash king of Judah lived for fifteen years after the death of Joash son of Jehoahaz king of Israel. Now the rest of the deeds of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish and put him to death there. And they brought him on horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his father in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath, and restored it to Judah, after the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah the son of Joash king of Judah, Jeroboam the son of Joash king of Israel began to reign in Samaria, and he reigned for forty-one years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He restored the border of Israel from Lebo, Hamath, as far as the Sea of Arabah, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet who was from gath Hepher. For the Lord saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter, for there was none left bond or free, and there was none to help Israel. But the Lord had not said that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, so he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Joash. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, and all that he did, and his might, how he fought, and how he restored Damascus and Hamath to Judah in Israel, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah his son reigned in his place. 2 Chronicles 25 Amaziah was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoaddan of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, yet not with a whole heart. And as soon as the royal power was firmly his, he killed his servants who struck down the king of his father. But he did not put their children to death, according to what is written in the law in the book of Moses, which the law commanded, Fathers shall not die because of their children nor children die because of their fathers, but each one shall die for his own sin. Then Amaziah assembled the men of Judah, and set them by fathers' houses under commanders of thousands and of hundreds for all Judah and Benjamin. He mustered those twenty years old and upwards, and found that there were three hundred thousand choice men fit for war, 
able to handle spear and shield. He hired also a hundred thousand mighty men of valor from Israel for a hundred talents of silver. But a man of God came to him and said, O king, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel with all these Ephraimites. But go, act, be strong for the battle. Why should you suppose that God will cast you down before the enemy? For God has power to help or to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents that I have given to the army of Israel? The man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. Then Amaziah discharged the army that had come to him from Ephraim to go home again. And they became very angry with Israel and returned home in fierce anger. But Amaziah took courage and led out his people and went to the valley of salt and struck down ten thousand men of Seir. The men of Judah captured another ten thousand alive and took them to the top of a rock and threw them down from the top of the rock, and they were all dashed to pieces. But the men of the army who Amaziah sent back not letting them go with them to battle, raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Horon, and struck down three thousand people with them and took much spoil. After Amaziah came from striking down the Edomites, he bought the gods of the men of Seir and set them up as his gods and worshipped them, making offerings to him. Therefore the Lord was angry with Amaziah and sent to him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the gods of a people who did not deliver their own people from your hand? But as he was speaking, the king said to him, Have we made you a royal counsellor? Stop. Why should you be struck down? So the prophet stopped, but said, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Then Amaziah of Judah took counsel, and sent to Joash the son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Joash, the king of Israel, sent word to Amaziah, king of Judah. A thistle on Lebanon sent to a cedar on Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son for a wife. And a wild beast of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. You say, See, I have struck down Edom, and your heart has lifted you up in boastfulness. But now stay at home. Why should you provoke trouble so that you fall, you and Judah, with you? But Amaziah would not listen, for it was of God in order that he might give them into the hands of their enemies, because they had sought the gods of Edom. So Joash king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah faced one another in the battle of Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his home. And Joash king of Israel captured Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, son of Ahaziah at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem for four hundred cubits from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. And he seized all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God, in the care of Obed-Ebim. He seized also the treasuries of the king's house, also hostages, and he returned to Samaria. Amaziah the son of Joash king of Judah lived fifteen years after the death of Joash the son of Jehoahaz the king of Israel. Now the rest of the deeds of Amaziah from first to last, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? From the time when he turned away from the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish and put him to death there. And they brought him upon horses, and he was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Matthew 24 Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death and you will be hated by all the nations for my name's sake. 
and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the world will come. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infant in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, Look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the heavens, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lessons. As soon as its branch becomes tender and it puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, would not have let his house been broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then? is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of the servant that will will come on a day when he does not expect him and an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Psalm 22 To the choir master, according to the doe of the dawn, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, 
scorned by mankind and despised by people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb, who made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you I was cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brother. In the midst of the congregations I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when you cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generations. They will come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we're going to say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
Before we say our prayers for the day and the time of the year, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels. Check the show notes for all the contact details, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and email. There are links in the show notes. If you click the links, they'll take you to wherever you need to go. But let's pray, shall we? Lord our God, be our Father, and care for your children here on earth, where it is often bitterly hard and where everything seems to turn against us. Keep us faithful in our inner lives, drawing all our strength from you, the eternal power of life, and from Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. For Jesus has promised to come to us, and you will send him in our time of need. Let your strong hand be with those who often do not know where to turn. So today, Lord, Show us paths we can follow to the glory of your name in all eternity. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year is another hymn about prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. For it glows with the light of his presence. Tis the beautiful garden of prayer. O the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer, O the beautiful garden of prayer, there my Saviour awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting, and I go with my burden and care, just to learn from his lips words of comfort in the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting, and he bids you to come meet him there, just to bow and receive a new blessing in the beautiful garden of prayer. O the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer, O the beautiful garden of prayer, there my Saviour awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. Let's say together the the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.